Hi, and welcome to FreshMyEye.com. My name is Eric, and this is part two of our tire track tutorial. I'm going to start off by file save scene as underscore two. All right, we've got our image plane in here. I'm going to go up to the mesh menu, down to create polygon tool, options box. Everything's just default settings. Well, it is now. All right, close that out. I'm just going to zoom in here just so I can see one of these. Maybe this one here. I kind of like the shape of this end because they're cut off. So I got it. Well, maybe not. But I kind of like the shape of this. So I'm just going to go in here and just use my polygon tool and just click. I'm going to go in a counterclockwise direction. Now it depends on what direction you go, whether you go counterclockwise or clockwise, that will determine whether your uh, faces are pointing up or pointing down. So whatever direction you go, do them all the same direction. Probably doesn't really matter since this is just for uh, texture, but it, uh, it's just a good habit to, if you use the create polygon tool, just to make everything the same way. So if you go clockwise, make sure you do create all these going clockwise. If you go counterclockwise, make sure you create them all going counterclockwise. All right, I'm going to, whoops, repeat that. So mesh, create polygon, and we're just doing one row of this pattern. I'm going to repeat and do the one right above it. Repeat and do this one right up here above it too. I see. What is this doing up here? Let's kind of just make something up, maybe. All right. Probably not what it's supposed to look like, but again, it's going to be fine. Okay, I got one row of the pattern done, so we don't need the image anymore. I'm going to go up to View, Image Plane, Image Plane Attributes, over to Image Plane. And then I'm going to hit the Delete button on my keyboard, and it gets rid of that. All right, now I'm going to select all of these that we just created. I'm going to group those together. So Control-G to group them together, or you, can go, or you can go up to your Edit menu down to Group. There's also an Ungroup. Okay, now with everything grouped together, let's, my manipulator handle is not in the middle, so I want to put that in the middle. So I'm going to go up to the Modify menu and click on Center Pivot. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to situate this to where it's inside of our tire. So let's just rotate, scale, and move, and just so we get it in there inside of our tire, like it's an actual tread. So something about like that looks pretty good for me. Okay, so now that we've got this on there, we need to attach this to our um, our curve. So let me just move this up out of the way. And it doesn't really matter what the orientation is because we'll have to adjust it once it's on our curve anyways. So let me select the group again. You can either select one item and then hit the up arrow button or you can just select the group in your outliner. So there's our group. Actually, let's rename that to group underscore tread pattern. All right, I'm gonna do a save. Oh, select our group. Then I'm gonna press the control button, select the animation curve, go up to our animation menu set, back up to our animate menu, and then motion pass. Just like we did this time, we're gonna do the same thing, attach the motion path. Options box, everything should still be the same. One to 150 frames, attach. Okay, it looks like the orientation is uh, fine, so I'm just going to leave that like it is. Now what we want to do is we're going to create our texture. So we want our tire tracks to go all the way across our ground plane, and then we're going to go to a top view, and we're going to do a render and save that render, and that's going to be our texture. So we need a way to make this tire tread this pattern to go all the way to full length and we're going to do is we're going to use an animation snapshot so let's go up to make sure we got our group selected go up to animate down to create animation snapshot options box okay our animation is 150 frames right now it's only 10 that's the default I believe yep I don't want to do 150 right now because we're going to have to do some adjustments and then after we get the adjustments just the way we want them, then I'll render out the full 150 frames of the snapshots. But I don't want to have to wait every single time, so I'm just going to leave it at 10. The 
increments is at one. So let's just see what that does right now. I'm gonna hit apply. That way the this dialog box stays open. All right, so our pattern is too far apart. So I'm gonna make sure I click inside the view panel, control Z, control Z again, just to undo that. I'm gonna go back into our options and change the increment to something a little smaller. So let's just say 0.5, we'll cut it in half. I'm gonna click apply. All right, so that's too close together. Our pattern's too, too squeezed together. So let me click back in the view panel, control Z, control Z. Let's change our increment to say 0.7. And we're just gonna keep playing with that until we get something that looks right, because that's getting pretty close right there. It's a little too far apart. So let me undo, let's try 0.6. All right, that looks pretty good right there. So that's gonna be our tire tracks. I think that looks all right, so pretty nice. So let me undo, and this time, since I have it just the way I want it, I'm gonna go ahead and do the full 150 frames. And I'm gonna click on Snapshot. That way the dialog box will close once it's done, because I don't need that anymore. Now after this finishes, we, will, uh, we wanna create a black and white image. So we want the background to be either black and the treads to be white, or vice versa. All right, so let's um, let's go ahead and do a white since the let's see the black the background is already black. So if we click on view, camera attribute editor, the default is if we scroll down look for environment default is black. Okay, but we're also in the perspective view. We want to do this in the uh, top view as far as the camera color. So let's go ahead and assign a color to our treads. So I'm going to select all of our treads in the outliner. I can just zoom in and right click on one, or actually let's do this the right way. I'm trying to get everybody used to using the um, Hypershade, so let's go to the Windows, Rendering Editors, over to Hypershade. Let's create a Lambert, so I'm just gonna click on Lambert on the left hand side, it puts it down here in the work area. I can double click on that, it opens up the attributes. And I'm just gonna make this a black, or uh, white color. And I'm also gonna name this, so I'm gonna right click, rename and call this shader underscore treads or just say black there we go okay now we're in the outliner I'm gonna select all my treads and then I'm gonna go and right click on this shader it doesn't matter whether I right click on it up here in the top section or in the work area just right click assign material to selection so now it's assign that white Lambert that we called black ironically um, is now attached to our treads. Let's go to a top view. Let me shade that so we can see. I'm gonna bring up our ground plane. All right, we're gonna attach this texture as a bump map to our ground plane. So our texture needs to be the same size as this ground plane, the same shape. So let me go ahead and go to view, down to the camera settings, over to resolution gate. All right, we can see our resolution gate, but we want our ground plane is square. So I want this resolution gate to be square. So let's go to our render settings, common tab. I'm gonna change it to a, now the bigger the texture, the better, the better your results are gonna be. So I'm gonna make this a two, K square, so 2048 by 2048. My software tab, I'm just gonna do a highest quality render on it. Close, all right, we're done with there. Okay, it's cutting off part of my resolution gate, the top and bottom, so I can't really gauge that too well. I mean, I can get the sides lined up with my ground, because remember, we want, we want our texture to be the same as our ground plane and I can line up the left and right side, everything that's inside this resolution gate is gonna be our texture. So I can't line up the top and bottom, so what I'm gonna do is I wanna shrink this window uh, horizontally. So I can easily do that by clicking on the attribute editor and it just squishes the uh, screen over more. So now I can see the whole resolution gate and all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna line this up till it fits in my resolution gate. All right, that should work right there. And I definitely want to be as precise as I can be, because the more precise, the better the results are going to be.
Alright, so there we go right there. Now let's check out our background color. So view, camera attribute editor. Okay, there's our environment background. It's black. And so we're going to have a black and white texture. Let's go ahead and do a render and see what we get. Okay, we don't want our ground plane showing, so let's get rid of that. And the whiteness of our tracks is not very white. It looks like a kind of a grayish, so we can fix that too. So let's go ahead and hide our ground plane. I'm going to go back into the hypershade. So Windows, Rendering Editors, Hypershade. I'm going to double click on this uh, shader, the, the one that we call black, which is really white. Actually, let me go ahead and fix that. So I'm going to rename it to white. All right. And down here, you'll see incandescence. I'm just going to make that all the way up full white. Let's go ahead and do a, another render. Now we've got a, a nice texture that we can use for a bump map now. I want to use this as a JPEG, but if I save this as a JPEG right out of Maya, it's going to lose a lot of quality. I can keep more quality by saving it out as a TIFF file or a PNG file or Targa or something like that and then convert it into a JPEG file with something else. So I'm going to save this image as a PNG file. I'll call it Tire Bump, so it's going to be a bump map. And it's wanting to put it in our images subfolder. I want this to go in our source images subfolder. Click save. All right, I'm going to close this out. We don't need that anymore. I'm also going to do a save. All right, I'm going to go back to my desktop, back into our project folder. So there's our source images subfolder. All right, and there's our bump. Okay, I saved it as a PNG file, so the background is actually transparent. That's why it doesn't look black right there. I'm going to go into GIMP. I don't have Photoshop. Uh, Photoshop is the preferred software to use, uh, but if you have GIMP, uh, it's a free program that you can uh, download, and it, it does what it needs to do. <laughs> All right, file, open. And you can also do this with Microsoft Paint if you want to. Just open it with Microsoft Paint, save it as a JPEG. All right, let's go to my desktop, tire tracks, source images, there's our tire, open. All right, I'm going to add a new layer, so I'm just going to click on this button in this uh, layers dialog. If you're using GIMP and you don't have that, just go up here to main your main window, underneath dialogs, click on layers. There's your layers right there. At the very bottom left-hand corner of it, you'll see a button allows you to create a new layer. Default is going to be the size of your image. And I'm going to, I want a black background. So if I look at my color swatches here, the foreground is black, the background is white. So I'm just going to use this foreground color. And I want this layer to be behind my tread. So I'm going to select the layer. And then down here at the bottom, there's a green arrow pointing down. So I'm going to click that. Moves the layer down underneath. There we go. So now we need to combine both these layers. So I'm going to go to Image, Flatten Image, File, Save As, Save It As a JPEG. Now if we had saved it as a JPEG out of Maya, it would have stayed black, but it would have lost some quality. All right, I'm going to change this to 100% quality, click Save, close this out, and now we have a JPEG of our bump map. And let me just also say this, it's preferred to have this part black and the part that you're doing as a bump white. If you have it reversed where this is white and your tracks are black, then when you get to the stage of animating the tire treads, you're going to see a bump, not only your treads, but you'll see a line going all the way across your ground plane as it's moving up. Let's go back into Maya. Let's go back into a perspective view. I'm going to put all these treads on a separate on another layer. So let's open our channel box. All the treads are selected. If they're not, just open up your outliner and select them all in there. Okay, I thought mine were selected, but not. Add us to a new layer. I'm going to hide that. I'll call this layer LYR underscore treads. Save. All right. 
So far, so good. We haven't really done anything too difficult. I'm going to bring my ground plane back up. Let's create a shader for our ground plane, and we'll assign our bump to it. So let's go back up to our Windows Rendering Editors, Hypershade. We're going to do the same thing we did for the treads. I'm just going to click on Lambert. There's our Lambert. I'm going to rename it, so I'm going to right-click on it, select Rename, and I'm going to call it Shader underscore... Now, I say Shader, but I'm actually doing SHDR underscore ground. So this is our ground shader. I'm going to double click on it to open up the attributes for it. In the attributes, there's, we're going to use some bump mapping and we're going to use color. So what we're going to do is I'm going to use that snow texture, that file, as the color. So over here on the left-hand side, let's look for file. There it is right there. I'm going to click on it. Let me zoom out in the work area. So here's our shader that we created, our Lambert. Here's a file node that we just created. It, attached to it is a placement node, so it just kind of tells Maya where to place our file onto our mesh. And we're also going to need a bump. So let's create a bump. I'm just going to look down until I see bump. Here's a general utilities. There's a bump 2D node. I'm just going to click on it. Put the bump down there. Okay, so we've got one file, but we need two because we're going to use the snow file for the color, and we're going to use that bump file for the bump. So let's get one more file here. It's going to click on file again, so now we have another one. All right. If you're not too familiar with Hypershade, uh, down here in the work area, if you don't have anything down here, if you accidentally close it out, just open it back up. Windows, Rendering Editors. Now, I didn't have anything connected, so oh well. Uh, rendering Editors, over to Hypershade. Here's our ground shader. Just click on it, and right above it, you'll see three buttons. That one is for input connections. The next one is input and output connections, and the right one is output connections. So keep an eye on what those icons look like. This input connection is just a box with an arrow going into it. Output is a box with an arrow going out. All right, so I'm just going to click on the input ones, and you can see we don't have anything connected to it. Uh, here's textures. Here's the nodes that we created. I'm just going to middle mouse drag those down. Here's our utilities. There's our bump. Here's our placement nodes that we made. And everything's right back down there. Now back up here at tabs, we can click on material to go back to those. So that's all that is. Just kind of organizes all that stuff for you. All right, we want to connect all these up. All right, so let's say this file here, I'm just going to click on it. If you don't see the attributes for it, just double click on it. And you'll see the attributes. There is a uh, image name. And the field's empty right now. The far right, we're going to click on this uh, button with the picture of the folder. That's going to allow us to navigate. And there are our files. I'm going to select, let's do the snow for this one. So I'm just going to select the snow file, click open. Now you can see it updates with a picture of the snow. This other one, I'm just going to click on it. Oh, the file node, not the placement node, but the file node. Same thing, click on that button to the far right of the image name. That's going to be our bump, so I'm going to select our tire bump, click open. So pretty simple, pretty easy to do. Now we don't see the file here, probably just because it's a, a large size, 2000 by 2000. Uh, you can make that smaller, you can make it 1024 by 1024 you, if you want, so it's just up to you. I'm going to leave mine at a 2K, a 2K file. Alright, we're going to make this file here, this bump file, as a bump. So I'm going to middle mouse drag this file node onto the bump node. When I release, I'm going to select default. So now those are connected. Now we just need to connect it to our shader. So I'm going to middle mouse drag the bump onto our shader. When I release, I'm going to select bump map from the list. So now our file, our bump map, is connected to our ground shader. Let's go ahead and apply our ground shader to our ground. So we can select our ground. Now we can right click on the shader, select assign material to selection. Or you can just middle mouse drag the ground shader from your work area over to the ground plane and release and it puts it on there. You can also drag it from the top up here too. So if you don't have it down here, you can just drag it from the top and do the same thing. All right, so now that that's attached, let's go ahead and do a render. I'm just going to minimize this for now. Let's do a render and see if we've got some bump on there. I'm going to change my render settings back down to a smaller size because we're still on 2K. Let's put this back on 640, close, and let's do a render. All right, so we've got a bump on there. It looks black just because it's way too deep. 
So let me shrink this window down some. I'm also going to zoom in here. Let's pull this back up. All right, our bump is too deep, so here's our bump node. I'm just going to double click, or I just, since the attribute editor is already open, I can just single click. Here is our attributes for a bump, and you'll see bump depth right there. Right now it's set on 1. I'm going to go down to point 0.1. Let's do another render. See what we have. Now what we're going to do is just play with that bump depth until we get something we like. Okay, it's still looking too deep, too black, so I'm going to close that out. Maybe take this down. I'm going to cut it in half each time. So 0.5. Or actually, we had a 0.1. I should have made it 0.05. So you don't have to be good with math to be able to do this. <laughs> All right, it's looking better. Still a little too deep for my taste. So let's try 0.025. Not bad, but maybe still a little too deep. Let's try 0.02. Might even do 0.015. All right, that's not bad there. I kind of like that. That looks pretty good. I'll do a little bigger render here so you can see it a little better. So you can get a better feel at what my bump is looking like. All right, there we go. So that, to me, kind of looks like a brand new tire just went across a surface because it's got some nice deep uh, threads, treads. All right, so that's all good. So let's add some color to our ground. So we've got this snow file here. And again, if you don't have it, just go to your textures. You, see it, you should see it right there and just drag it back down with your middle mouse button. All right, once you get your file node down there, I'm going to middle mouse drag that file, that snow, onto our shader, our ground shader. When I release, I'm going to select color. And now it plugs it into the color. So if we do a render, we've got some snow. It's kind of hard to tell. So let's kind of back out some. I'm going to minimize that. Let's look at our ground plane here. All trial and error. All right, so there's our snow. Not too bad. I mean, it's not the greatest snow texture, but it's actually pretty decent. You can, actually, you can probably lighten it up, change the color and stuff if you want. Okay, now our bump is actually going the wrong way it looks like. It looks like our bump is sticking out of the snow and rather than look rather than being sunk into the snow. So let's zoom in on that just to double check that. Now it looks like it's going the right way. Alright, let me pause this because I hear somebody at the door. Alright, um Looks like the bump's going the right way. If it's going the wrong way on yours, then you can go back to your bump node. Just open up the attributes for it and just change that value to a negative value. All right, and we may end up doing that later. We'll see. Depends on how everything turns out when we do our animation for it. All right, everything looks good. So let's go ahead and close this out. I'm going to go ahead and save this. And in the next part, we will animate our tracks, tire tracks, as they go across, as our tire goes across the uh, ground plane. So I'll see you in the next part.